It's not about motivation. When is need discipline? Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Boxstro, all the way from Las Vegas, the Fontaine Blue Hotel, uh, which looks pretty nice on the pictures. Is it as good as it, as it looks on the pictures, Frank? Beautiful, mate. I think I might move here, to be honest with you. I think uh, this is the future for me, the Fontaine Blue in Las Vegas. But I'll, I'm looking at you, by the way, are you in bed? Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, casually chilling in bed, doing these in interviews. Bed. Perfect. Right. It's 6 p.m. Yeah, I'm guessing it's 10 a.m. over there, so uh, it's still early doors. Um, an, an interesting card for you guys. A, a random brand new hotel. Uh, you've got five, six fights on. Richardson Hitchens uh, headlining. Uh, we'll start with Richardson Hitchens um, fighting a guy that uh, looks good on paper. You know, how, how good is this guy? I think he's very good. I think he's going to come and bring it in the fight and he's going to make Richardson fight. You know, look, he, he got a bit of heat in his last fight when he, you know, fought Zapeda. It was a, it was a boxing masterclass, but from an entertainment perspective, got a bit of heat there, but I think Lemos is going to bring it to him in the fight. You know, we saw Lemos, I think he had a final eliminator previously at the weight below against Lee Selby, you know, a few years back in the, in the UK. I think it may have been one of our lockdown shows actually oh, at wow. Wembley. Um, and, uh, yeah, look, he's a he's a brilliant fighter, and I think, but I think we truly believe that Richardson Hitchens has got everything he needs to go on and uh, and be a big name in the sport of boxing. And um, you know, look, he he took the challenge. It's the IBF final eliminator for Subriel Matias's um, belt. A lot of people don't want to fight him. We've seen Liam Paro step up to it, but that's that's his aim. He wants that fight, and he he, he wants to win a world title. So he's got to get past Saturday night. Um, tough fight, but yeah, Fontainebleau. Great place to do the first boxing show as well. Uh, what's the plan with regards to kind of breaking uh, Richard Sonata as like a breakout star? Because clearly he's got all the ability, all the talent. But sometimes you find there's so many Americans like this that are that good, but the fans like on the wider aspect don't really get to know him until they're like kind of just thrown in. Yeah, like, I think that's part of the tough part of, you know, US sport. There's so much competition. There's so much going on every day that, you know, it is harder to build uh, over here. But you know, I think since he's come across, he's had some entertaining performances. Look, he was a he was a brilliant fighter. He was obviously with um, Mayweather Promotions at one point, you know. And uh, I think we need to keep pushing him, keep building him. But at the end of the, the end of the day, it comes down to the fights. It comes down to delivering entertainment in the fights. Um, and he's got you know he's got to do that on Saturday night. But you know, he's very much up for it. He looks in the shape of his life, and he knows what's ahead of him. Uh, we'll talk about Galal Yafai. Uh, I'll start with a tweet from Sonny Edwards, actually, because I know there's whenever Galal fights, is the Sonny talk starts as well. Um, re realistically, like, is, is that fight actually going to happen this year, or is it just a case of because Sonny's profile's that high, you know, it kind of just interwines with the Galal when, when he fights? I don't know whether it could be this year, you know, whether at the end of the year, maybe early next year. It's definitely a fight that there's interest there to make. You know, I, I look, I know Sonny's comments around, well, stop talking about it in fight week. Actually talk to me about it. Drop them a note on it. So l l let's see. But it's a brilliant fight. And we, as we've seen, domestic fights mean a lot in the sport. Um, and, you know, I think it would be important. And it, it's a it's a big fight if it can be made. So, you know, but it's not done. It's not done by any means. Galal obviously is like he's an incredible talent, but you know, how on earth do you negotiate that fight down the line? I'm just curious because Sonny's profile in that division is so big at the moment. Uh, so I'm assuming whoever he fights, he's probably going to be expecting like eighty percent of whatever's on the table. Yeah, look, it, yeah, every fight is going to be dealt with on its own merit. You know, uh, did he ask you to say that the eighty percent? No, he hasn't. No, because yeah, I just no, I don't no. I know him quite well. I can just imagine this. <laughs> he's a uh, look. I think. If the fight makes sense for everybody, then it will happen, you know, and that's something we have to deal with over a period of time. It would be great if we could do it for a world title as well. Definitely. So Sky Nicholson, you know, in the build-up to this fight, everyone used to go on about her power, wanting to see knockouts. She's coming in off a really good stoppage win. Um, how much is that? Do you think that will help her in, in making sure she gets a, a dominant win against her? a good opponent who's only lost once? No, look, 100%. It's... Uh... It's important. She had a good win against Lucy Wildheart, as you say, who, you know, she's a she's a tough fighter, but Sky needs to go in there. She she needs to deliver as well. You know, she she wants to win a world title. It's a big night for her. She's worked very hard. She's uh, built a great fan base for herself. 
Um, and, you know, this is a massive opportunity, something she's worked for for a long, long time. You know, a standout amateur and now to become a world champion would be huge for her. But I think, you know, she's been training very hard. She looks, looks in great shape and, and ready to go. And she, you know, we're talking to her yesterday, deliver a big knockout performance, hopefully. What, what is the plan with Sky? Would you uh, potentially look at to take her back to Australia should she win? Or are you going to try and chase that Serrano fight? I, I don't I know if there's an issue with the WBC and rounds, etc. Yeah, look, I think in terms of what's next, there's obviously, as, as people know, there's, there's always big backing in Australia from the government, especially around big sporting events. I think if she can win a world title on Saturday, there's a big opportunity to take her back to Australia. That's what we'd love to do. Um, you know, although she's built a huge international audience, Australia is a great market for boxing, as we've seen, and some great, you know, stars coming out of Australia. Um, so, yeah, for sure, that's in the pipeline to try and make something happen should she come through Saturday night with the big win. Good stuff. Uh, and I can't leave without talking about my favourite matchroom USA fighter, Diego Pacheco. Uh, unbelievable talent. I was actually hoping that we might see him in this uh, 5v5 thing, but obviously they've not picked his weight division, have they? No, look, as well with Diego, we want to take him back to LA after this. You know, he had a great, great fight in LA back in November. You know, it was a real test as well, the kind of tests he needs as he's going to step through uh, the levels in the sport. Um, so, yeah, to, to, I think Saturday night for him is, you know, he would go in there against anyone tomorrow. You know, he has so much faith, as we all do, in his ability. But at the same time, he's 23 years old and we have to build him at the right pace. And, you know, ma make sure that when he takes that step up to the next level, he's ready. He's had the experience. Um, you know, look, obviously got a great trainer in Benavides and, and great camp as well being in and around there he sparred with some of the best over the last few years um and you know we believe he's got huge potential in the coming years to you know be a standout star in the sport um and you know saturday night is another test for him but beyond there let's take him back to la it would have been great on the june 5v5 but like i say we want to headline him back in la he had a great turnout recently and we want to do the same thing again what what kind of fight do you think that could be like a breakout fight for him? Um, because like he's fifteen on box rec. Um, I'm just looking at you know, uh, there could be a boxer face off Callum Simpson maybe. I know there might be talk. Uh, no, dis no disrespect to Callum Simpson, but Diego Pacheco is on another, uh, in my opinion, another level to Callum Simpson. You know, and not really on the radar. Like the fight I really like is a is an in house fight. Is Edgar Belanga? Wow. You know, I think that's a great fight. Um, Edgar's obviously, you know, as part looking at the Canelo fight as well, possibly for September. You know, he's obviously got Mungir in May, but that's a potential for Edgar. If he got a shot like that, you know, he's not going to turn that away. But I do think if that kind of fight doesn't come through, I think that's a brilliant fight. Zach Parker? Yeah, possibly. Possibly. Look, I think he went up to 175, or I think there was talk about whether he's at 175 now or maybe he's going to 175. Um, he didn't look great, I don't think, in that fight he had against uh, Zook. Was it Zoy? Yeah, yeah. Zoy Zuga. recently? Something Zuga. Yeah, I don't, Tyra, yeah. I, I don't think he looked great in there, but, you know, like, I, I think um, Diego's at that level now to keep building through and, you know, he's ready to go against the top guys. Good stuff. Uh, and we'll just uh, wrap up and talk to you about a couple of other side subjects. Uh, big fight of the weekend, Fraser Clark. Um, Fabio Wardley. Uh, one of the things I want to ask you first before we talk about the fight, we've seen this big thing come out yesterday with regards to numbers and how many views it did. And obviously a lot of people are confused, including myself. Like, how does that compare? Because I know ages for on non-pay-per-view on Sky as well. So uh, you're, I'm guessing you know the numbers. Like, how does that compare with like what, what we saw on Saturday? Yeah, look, everyone's going to spin a narrative that makes sense for them. You know, the... The boxer fights since they've been on Sky have been nearly on every channel Sky exists on, you know, and that's because Sky have invested a lot more heavily into boxing over the recent years, not just financially, but in terms of the the backing they've given it. So they need viewing figures to to follow that. So when it's on a free channel like the Sky Showcase or this platform, you know, and they they build all those numbers in together, yeah, it should do huge numbers. When you're on about four or five different channels, you should do huge numbers. But look, there's no point getting involved in back and forth. We did this, they did that. Like at the end of the day, great fights are good for the sport. It was a great fight, did good viewing figures. Well done. You know, and it's not, you know, we can all we can all point to things and say, 
you know, we've broken the pay-per-view record on Sky numerous occasions. We're doing six pay-per-view shows a year because that's what Sky wanted us to do and delivering huge numbers. You know, but it's not about point scoring. Great, great fight. Congrats. Great, congrats to both guys. You know, they got in there. Uh, they delivered amazing performances and, and, and they deserve massive paydays and, uh, and well done to them. I know you, you've known Fraser from back in the day when he used to do security at matchroom shows. So you, everyone knows him on the scene. Uh, how were you surprised or did you just expect Fraser Clark to kind of Fraser Clark to kind of silence a lot of his doubters? Because there were a lot of people in the industry were saying that he'll get stopped and he doesn't have the heart. He doesn't have the engine, but he, he, he showed he does. Look, you only have to look at Fraser Clark's career, both as an amateur then as a pro, but in terms of like the sparring, the people he's been in with over the years, and I know sparring's different, and I know amateur boxing's different, but he's been in with the best fighters in the world in reality. And yeah, look, he'd never done 12 rounds. I don't think, I think he'd done 10 rounds once, maybe, I think in his last fight, you know. But when you've been in the sport that long, when you've been in with some of the names he's been in there with, both in training and amateur boxing, you know, it's... It gives him the experience he needs to go into those types of fights. And but Fabio Wardley as well, immense credit to him as well, because you know what he's done in the sport. I love, I love Fabio. I love those guys. They're great guys and they deserve every bit of success that comes to them. So I'm happy for Fraser, you know, like I say, like you said, silencing a lot of doubters in there as well. Do you think he should rematch or do you think they should go like different routes and meet down down the line somewhere? No, I think you know, look, you look at the cut. Uh, Fabio's got I think he's going to be out of the ring for a while he's not going to be able to spar for a while I, I think Fraser will want to get in there back in there quite quickly maybe that's a fight for down the road you know down the road in time um, I can you know it can be built even bigger and then uh, the, the last thing I want to speak to you about we've seen a, a big back and forth with regards to this Dalton Smith Adam Azim scenario uh, you know We've seen uh, Ben Shalom go on TalkSport today and he basically has an offered uh... like Ben Shalom Radio isn't it TalkSport is he? I don't know. Um, but he basically offered um, to meet Eddie. Um, do you think that will happen? I don't think it need like, 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 I mean, look, can meet by all means. There's a lot of people comparing it to like the match room, Queensbury, us and Warren now. But the reality is, and I said this in an interview previously, we were doing business with Queensbury before the Saudi stuff, you know, whether it was John Ryder, Zach Parker. We didn't necessarily get on and talk and like say nice things about each other is the truth, but we still did business because we knew that if it made sense for everyone, if it made sense for our fighters, then it was for the benefit of the sport. So, you know, we, we're not standing in the way of making good fights happen. Like what have we done? We've done nothing in this whole period that has, you know, created any sort of issue. We've never, we haven't pulled fighters out. When we've lost purse bids, they've gone and boxed on boxer shows. When we've agreed deals, they've gone and boxed on boxer shows. That's not in any means from us, you know. But at the same time, you know, there's a narrative spun that, oh, I d- we do this for the fighters. It's not for the fight. Just be honest. Be open. You do things for your business and for your platform, right? And again, I'm not saying it's, it's up to you. It's your business. You do what you want to do, but just be honest about it. They didn't take Paul Fraser Clark out of that purse because he wasn't ready. They pulled him out because it didn't make sense for them to potentially lose the fight. Fraser Clark, I know Fraser Clark very well. I know a lot of people who know him very well. He wanted that fight. He didn't want to be pulled out. So you're not doing it for your fighter. You know, you're doing it for yourself. So, you know. But, you know, that decision, does it kind of, who was maybe the right decision considering how tired Fraser looked and still managed to find another he might, he was Six months ago, would have, made, would have been the same amount of tired as he was in there. You know, like, it's, it's not, was it, what did he have? One fight between there, two fights? Two. Two, but not really. They weren't, like, anywhere near the level of the Fabio Wardley fight. It's not like they set him up to go in there and have a 12-round tear-up, you know. But, again, look, everyone's going to do what they need to do, right? The Adam Azim situation. I don't disagree, like personally, with Adam Azim isn't ready for Dalton Smith. But you put him in that position. You talked him up as being this superstar. You said that he's going to fight Kishon Davis, fight this person, that person. And he's not ready for that. There's no harm in that. He's 20, yeah, he's 21 years old. But you can't, every day the story changes if it's this, it's that. Oh, he's 21, he's 27. Like, just come out and say, but do it at the start. Don't go on this whole month-long, you know, thing of 
oh, I know, we're going to look at that. We'll see what happens with his fight against Bader. They wanted him to lose. He didn't lose. He looked great. Then they went, oh, shit. Now, look, I think Harlem Eubank can beat Adam Azim. And Adam Azim will get beat for a th the third of the money he would have got to fight Dalton Smith. It's not really a great career move then, is it? But I actually think the Harlem Eubank's a hard fight. Fight's a hard fight for him. Now, look, who is Adam Azim, with all due respect, as good as he might be, he hasn't, you know, he, he didn't look great against Ryland Charlton. I think he fought Ryland Charlton. Uh, recently or a while ago? A while back. Didn't look great in that fight. I don't think he's, I've never. That was his best performance. Really. I think he stopped him in a round or two. Was it that one? Maybe it was someone I'm different. Talking about a different fight. It might have been the, the last one. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But he's not, he could get beat against Harlem Eubank. And then it's not a great career move, is it? You know, so. so you know, a lot. Uh, obviously, the, a lot of the pundits and people give opinions, and a lot of them have kind of said that if Adam Azim was a matchroom fighter, and the tables were the other way around, you guys wouldn't have made the fight now because you would have waited for it to happen down the line because he makes more money, make makes more sense uh, a year or two down the line. Uh, that's what yeah, that's yeah, that's what I said. That as in personally, if I represented uh, Adam Azim today, I'm not saying I would have said take the Dalton Smith fight. But I wouldn't have gone through a month and a half long show of, oh, we're going to do it. Yeah, we're going to. It's embarrassing. Just pull out on day one and go, he's not ready for him. That's the reality of it, because that's what you're saying. But and that's with, what been... with, with, with regards to that, didn't Dalton already have the fight schedule? So the, if they pulled out, it would have made no difference to the Zapita fight, because that still would have happened. Yeah, but the purse pit was always there. Mm. And he said a month, but, but, but like Ben Shalom a month ago said to me, we're not doing that fight next. I said, no problem, but just pull him out. But they didn't pull him out because they wanted him to lose against the Pader and then happy days, everything's, you know, and got worried. But Dalton, if he did lose to the Pader, would he still have been the mandatory? Would he been allowed to fight for the European or would he been like... Uh, I'm not, uh, to be honest, I can't, I, I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. Possibly not. But anyway, the reality is they wanted him to lose and then basically just go, oh, don't worry about that fight now. Because they had a reason. Because they go, oh, he's just lost. He's not. That doesn't make any sense, that fight. Good stuff. Anyway, each their own. That's it. It's like EastEnders. They said it back and forward, back and forward. It's yeah, brilliant. but the problem is, people yeah. say we're going about it. You get asked a question. It should be an, like, that's my honest opinion. I'm just giving you my opinion. Yeah, I'm not going to knock it, Frank. He keeps us all in business, keeps everyone entertained. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and when these fighters get paid them and if it does happen down the line they get paid millions and i hope they thank us for it because we're doing the groundwork for them right now 100 like, percent. you'll get your percentage but i won't um but yeah oh, yeah it. by the time by the time some of these fights happen i think i'll be out of boxing mate yeah hell grow back uh i'm saying <laughs> might grow back as well uh but yeah i appreciate your time what, what's your plan for the rest of the day that it looks like it's nice and warm over there what are you going to get on the sunbed or no no sunbeds today i'm uh We've got the press conference later today. You've got some meetings this afternoon. And I'm going to go to the gym again this afternoon. So uh, trying not to be fat anymore. Right. Trying being the key word. Well, good luck with that, Frank. Appreciate your time as always. And uh, I'll catch you uh, in a couple of weeks. Cheers, man. Take care. Win gold now. IPMB is giving away 524 karat gold coins to our token holders worth over $2,000 each. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you very much for this uh, great news. It's amazing. It's never been easier to own gold, so join the raffle now. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.